right, fantastic. Welcome back. This is still hashtag in the morning at Brian Sakwana One at Point Two Four Four Channel. Everyone, all social media, and this segment is the last interview of the day. But as always, like I said, uh, interact with us on social media. We'll be sampling your feedback to us the tail end of this programming. And in this segment, we're going to talk about how to ensure that fashion makes you money. In short, fashionpreneurship or fashion entrepreneurship. And we have a very powerful guest who is live with us in the studio. His name is Leshon Ketienya, but he said it's Ke Le Letion Ketienya. First of all, good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. It's a pleasure to, have, to be here. All right, you're welcome. Yeah. Now, let's get to know you a little bit. Um, you're an artist as well as a fashion designer. Uh, at what point did you merge all of these things together? And now here you are on TV talking about what you do. Okay, I would say it's not really physically, it's all organic. Yeah. I do it at the same time. So I would say from a young age, I began painting, drawing people, drawing the on paper. A young age at around what? Around age nine. Then? That's when I was uh -huh. able to draw some, something really realistic. Uh -huh. So from the age of nine, I, be, I began like uh, looking for other forms of art. Right. I, I developed uh, love for fashion. Mm -hmm. I realized also I'm good in poetry. Okay. So I kept going at every, every different angle possible. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so until where I am right now. Right, you interesting. Know. You mentioned poetry and, and, and also developing interest for fashion. Was it like, uh, did you find or draw inspiration from like maybe someone close to you in your childhood? Um, or they're like, you know, like for me, I used to watch 106 and Park a lot way, way back. I used to love the likes of Terence and, 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 and the free and Kisha Shante, like growing up as a person who would love to be in, in media. So for you, did you draw attention from like maybe a fashion designer? Or was your mom dressing up well, your other siblings? Um, who did the inspiration come from? I would say my mom. Uh -huh. You know how during occasions, they usually go to the tailors, uh -huh. they get a nice outfit made. Yeah, she used to design her own outfits, then she just okay. takes it to the tailors. She doesn't uh -huh. take from the internet or anything. She, right. designs, she designs everything, she draws the sketch, and she uh -huh. takes to the tailors. Okay. So those that I think that opened up my mind in okay. that direction for fashion. Right. For art, I would say everything is an inspiration. I can go for a walk. Uh -huh. I see how this bird is looking. I like the, the way the bird is looking. I may take yeah. a picture and go back and paint it. The sunshine and sunshine, the sunset. flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm inspired by everything actually All when right. it comes to art. I feel like that also can uh, trickle down to photography. Yeah. True, true, true. Do you do as well a lot of photography? Because fashion and photography, they're like twins. I wouldn't say I'm perfect at it, uh -huh. but I would take that as a reference. All right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Now, uh, you said you like officially now began at 17. Yeah. Uh, probably maybe done with high school or maybe finishing. I was just finishing high school that year, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so that's when like you intentionally started pursuing this journey. Yeah. Okay, talk about it. I began by printing t-shirts, heat transfer, very simple things. Just trying to see what it is I'm, ent I'm entering into. So I tried to sell a few. They didn't really sell. I just uh -huh. started like going for pop-ups, like doing like vendoring at events. Right. And more like uh, just getting myself out there. Yeah. Yeah, so over time I realized which market I want to enter. Okay. And I started flowing with it. Right. Yeah. In terms of support, uh, who are the biggest support system that you would say validated even what you, you loved most uh, from a family setup and from a friendship setup? Are there people you could mention that played a big role in ensuring they nurture your gift? Yeah, I would say my parents, yes. Uh -huh. But it took some time before they to actually approved. Yeah. <laughs> so they had to see a lot of the effort I was putting in. Yeah. And you know, people were giving feedback. Oh, uh -huh. I saw your son doing this. I saw your son doing this. So right. over time, they had to. For they, they saw that there's something here that's coming up strong. Right. Also, my friends, uh, they really inspired me like to, they were mostly stylists. So mm -hmm. they told me, try this, try this, try that. They showed me how screen printing is done, how heat transfer is done, you uh -huh. know, just techniques. You, you mentioned uh, heat? Heat transfer. Heat transfer, yeah. uh, what does it mean? It's a form of uh, putting the design on, on, on the clothing itself. Uh -huh. uh, so it's like vinyl, it's a uh -huh. vinyl uh, uh -huh. printout, and then uh -huh. now you press it on the, the on the actual t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a ma it's like maybe we are trying to put a logo, press a logo on a plain t-shirt. Yeah, or it's a plain actually, canvas. It's like it's like a very hot iron. Right. Very hot yeah. with a machine. Yeah. So you just press it in uh -huh. and it will stick for, for for a long time, yeah. Or maybe forever. Maybe forever. <laughs> maybe. Right. Depending in, on the quality. 
Uh -huh, yeah. Interesting. But function has really evolved. Before we talk about your painting, uh, your painting uh, gift, function has really evolved. And especially nowadays, like we've seen a lot of uh, fashion labels from the likes of Givenchy, Fendi, Fendachi, Versace. You can name them. There's so many Christian Lobatini. Zingine uh, zinetwa jizi. You know, kwanga very common. Gu. Gucci. Gucci, right. Yeah, Gucci. As in, how do you manage to stay uh, relevant in such a space where there's always something popping internationally and being receiving a lot of uh, positive reception, especially us in Africa? Like, you're likely to walk on the street and see somebody with a Gucci label, that somebody who has something African-made or Kenyan-made or something with a Kenyan flag, apart from the response that we've got here a lot. How do you manage to stay competitive in such a busy space? I think a lot of what is hot right now is from the past. So yeah. they take a lot of references from the 90s mm -hmm. and a lot of the fashions like the bell bottoms. Now right. th that's what's hot right now. I've seen a lot of the baggy jackets exactly. and the baggy trousers. Exactly. Uh -huh. So in 2001, that was a big thing, right? right. Now it's coming back. So a lot of right. the inspiration I get from designing is not from really other brands. Okay. I look at the old trends. Mm -hmm. I look at what's, what's, re what's relevant right now okay. and how I can put in my taste also. Right. And what Kenyans may actually like. Right. Yeah, so. All right. From the people that have managed to uh, get some of your fashion pieces, uh, maybe what were they? Like the first one you designed that a person bought and they liked. Uh, maybe you can talk about some of them. Some of the on ensembles, that, thanks, that is the word. Some of the ensembles that you managed to sell out. Okay, I would say the first one was a jacket which had a lace dress. So yeah, it was a lace dress. Yes, it had like Look a lace like, covering. Uh, an afro, an afro coat or something. No, it was a bomber jacket. Bomber jacket. Yeah, like a uh -huh. real puffy jacket. So uh -huh. below it, it had a removable lace. So okay. like you, you could wear like a nice dress, a nice fitting dress. Oh, it was mostly female. It was, yeah, that one was for a female. Uh -huh. Yeah. So th after that, now I kept like pushing the the boundaries. Yeah. And for men, I also did another puffy one, but now uh -huh. it had like prints behind. Yeah, okay. so I've, I've been trying to develop my own aesthetic right. and kind of give you a, a sense of let you on, not just the industry, just right. mainly. A sense of your yeah. own process. Exactly, identity. exactly. And your own creams and visions. Exactly. Uh, it, it makes me remember the time we had uh, the college jackets. I, 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 they, they were really famous that True. time. College jackets. I don't know where they are at. We saw them a lot with Chris Brown and Kina Tigers in the video music as well. So uh, I think you can, you, you, you can, you can have, we can have a Letion. They're coming <laughs> back, actually. It's coming. It's coming. It's Not very strong. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, in terms of now, uh, fabric plays a huge role in, in fashion, yeah, especially in making some of these outfits. They call them ensembles. Uh, how, where do you get your fabric? Uh, how do you buy them? Uh, do you import them? Are they available in Kenya? And maybe what are some of your favorite types of fabric? OK. I would say that was one of my first challenges getting quality fabric. After I found out the market I wanted to pursue, that was one of my biggest challenges. But over time, if you keep asking around, you'll get nice places which, which can like, supply you with very good quality. So I would say the first place is Maziwa, which Maziwa. is in Jogo Road. Oh, Maziwa and Jogo yeah, Road. it's more like a hidden place. It's not really known by everyone. Uh -huh. So it's not easy to get every material. Like, you won't find many people with that material. Uh -huh. But it's a growing place. I would say that would be my best place to source materials. Okay. Uh, we're also looking into importing uh -huh. in the future, okay. but right now we usually source from Maziwa. Uh -huh. I like suede. This is suede, actually. Material. This uh -huh. is suede material. So see how it's shining in the light. For me, I would have said it's uh -huh. corduroy. Yeah. <laughs> corduroy is the one with the lines. Corduroy, oh, it yeah. has like very tiny little stripes. Exactly, yeah. All That's right. corduroy. Now I get it. So this is suede. Suede. Yeah, yeah. I also like Meaning it. that you can add dye or something. No, not really. Uh -huh. uh, it's just, it's called suede. Okay. Yeah. So mainly even, even when you will like eye on it, uh -huh. the shade and the, and the, sh the way it shines when uh -huh. it's in the sun or in light, okay. it's kind of different. Is it, is it a wash and wear? Yeah, it's, you, you can wash. Iron and, and whatever, dry. Uh -huh. Wash and wear. Yeah, yeah. But I would, I would advise you for this material, for it to last, uh -huh. you take it to the dry clean. Uh, That's laundry. the best way possible. Yeah. Laundry, man. Yeah. Hey, 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 come on, our pesa. It's a bidi. It's a bidi. My level. You have to invest in your fashion. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of fashion yeah. investment, yeah. actually, uh, there's a saying that says, "You are addressed the way you are dressed." I don't know what that means to you as a creative in the fashion space. Uh, does it mean a lot? Yeah, I would say the way you dress is your character. Uh -huh. Everyone has a character of who they want to be, of, of what they are pursuing, okay. and the way you dress 
really shapes of she really shapes that character yeah. how people see you your first yeah. impression how people perceive you yeah exactly the respect you will get when you walk in uh -huh. so i would say that's investing you really need to invest in your in your Fashion. character actually uh -huh. yeah it's a part of your character it should be a part of your character right yeah because it introduces you exactly right. even before you say a word right. so as soon as you walk in a room the first thing someone sees how you dress yeah, a, a, a well-dressed gentleman exactly Right. And, and still on that note, perhaps, are there maybe like fashion mistakes that a lot of people make from a designer's perspective that you'd say, eh, by the way, uh-uh, hi-fi. But then you can't tell them because you are not related to them. But then maybe if you have a chance to tell them, you'd say, eh, like also in, in terms of color coordination, or I know you call it in fashion color blocking. Exactly. Like how do you help somebody to color block and put all these outfits or these ensembles together and come out fashionably. It could just be a simple, a simple outfit like shirt, trouser, jeans, whatever, some good shoes or a good coat or, and, and like the way you're dressed. How do you help a person walk down through that uh, journey of coming up with a perfect outfit that's fashionable I'll or say, fashion statement? <laughs> okay. I would say the most important thing is feet. Feet? It's the feet. Oh, the feet. Yeah, if the feet is wrong, okay. the rest will be wrong, even, even though the color blocking is right. So okay. if something is oversized, it doesn't fit you nicely, or it's too tight on you, right. that's, yeah. that's the first direction when, when I'm looking at your style. Uh -huh. so, so you should know your, your body type? Yes, your body body know your body type. Body exactly, type. exactly. Okay. Don't over, don't dress oversize. There's oversize which is nice, but there's oversize which is too much. Like way then, out. Exactly. And uh -huh. then there's also that tight, that's too tight. Yeah. Okay. Especially a person who is well built. Exactly. And then they're in extremely tight jeans, tight clothes. Uh, unless you want to show that off, yeah. But unless still, you want to show it off. Yeah, but I still want to show their body muscles. Yeah, but still, okay. it, it won't look as good as getting the right fit. Uh -huh. Getting the right fit is very important. Right. After that, now you look at the colors. Okay. There's some colors which can go together. I wouldn't say right. there's really the right colors, but mm. I would say if, if you have more than three colors on one outfit. Yeah. Like for me, I have more than three colors. I wouldn't say. <laughs> Would you like, say I'm fashionable? Yeah, 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 yeah. You would say I'm fashionable. I like, I like your shoes. I okay. like your your shirts. The the different colors. Uh -huh. Like I wouldn't say you have red belt. I'm not a rainbow. Not really. Okay. They go together. They are all cohesive. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So maybe only we change the the red belt. The red belt. Yeah. Right. But, but the red belt also complements the shoes. The shoes. Yeah. Okay. So I would say, yeah, so you're I'm fashionable, yeah. Ah, nice. Nimepo a license. Nikuwa kunywa too. All right, so how would you help now a person to come up? For example, now, um, let me imagine um, a person who is working in an office, uh, an official job like um, uh, a banker, a banker who is fashionable. You know, you can be a banker, but you can, be, you can have money, but you're not fashionable, meaning like you're, you're not up to latest with the trends. You're not dressing in a classy way. Like, how do you help someone who is just dressing for, that is the word, for, to come up with a stylish outfit for the day to okay. work? Okay, I would say, like I said, the feet. Uh -huh. You look at your body size. Uh -huh. After that, I would say, what are you comfortable with? Uh -huh. You know, I can dress you, yes, but are you really comfortable? Will you... Will you walk it, will you walk how you dress? Right. Yeah, so I would say those are very important, especially the body size, like, the body like size. know yourself, right. know where you're going, know what you want, okay. the occasion. Uh -huh. The yeah. occasion is really important. The, the occasion is as important as the body size. Right, because yeah. there was a wedding I saw and <laughs> the MC <laughs> is dressed completely off you know, the rest are in suit and tie, black and tie, black tie, whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, some, you know, khaki, whatever. So I think that, but they say, you know, there should be a difference between the bride, the bridegroom, and the MC. So I was like, ah, oh, maybe that, that was cool. What do you think, especially in a wedding setup, if somebody wants to come up with the best outfits? Are there perhaps also things they should consider? Because weddings are really sensitive, especially to the lady, because she's sensitive about, about colors, about how the bridesmaids would look apart from, you know, the bridegroom? Uh, weddings, we need to pay attention to the, the, their team, the yeah. bridesmaids, the grooms, uh, friends, as in the whole lineup. I would say the bride and the groom is not that important because, yes, they have the primary colors, white and black, yeah. or they'll complement each other. Yeah. But if the, the lineup doesn't complement the groom and the bride, yeah it will mess up everything. Uh -huh. And also, you know, at weddings, the reception usually has colors on the tents and everything. Right. So I would say we look at a color palette 
for right. everything. If there's a color palette for the tents, we match it. We find how we can match it with the with the lineup of the people, the yeah. bridesmaids, yeah, right. the MCs. Yeah. Right. People, so the MC should also match. <laughs> Oh. Um, I, there should be a difference between the MC and the rest. He shouldn't, he shouldn't be too loud, too different. Right, not yeah. too different. Yeah, not too different. Not too opaque. Something in the same close, line. Yeah. Just close. Just in terms of the color shades, you mentioned color palettes. Yeah. All right, now back to you, uh, you your designs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe, uh, are you looking forward to maybe also design suits? Or uh, uh, also, what are some of the main, uh, main fashion statements that you're purely focused on right now? Like for you, purely? I wouldn't say we're focused on something purely. Uh -huh. But at, right, at this moment right now, we're focused on streetwear. Streetwear? Streetwear. Mm -hmm. Something for the youth, something uh -huh. where you can wear uh, to a casual of, uh, occasion, right. something that's not always suit and tie. Because right. I personally, I don't always wear a suit. You're not a suit uh, Very person. rarely, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't like ties. Uh -huh. So I would say um, right now we're focusing on streetwear. Okay. And something not really like, which is too playful, something right. you, which is just casual. Right. And like cool. warm. Yes, and exactly. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but to your outfit, yeah, the one you got right mm -hmm. now, uh, would you say this is streetwear now? Yeah, yeah I would for say me, I feel like it's casual, just casual. I would say, the, I would say the jacket, the way I've put it with the with the with the shoes, mm -hmm. like the J's, I would say it's streetwear. Yeah. Uh, you've got Jordans. Yeah, not really Jordans. They're uh -huh. called okay. Nike. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, the, the 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 name the name trousers and then the jacket and yeah. then the t-shirt and then you've got a chain statement. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, what do you call this all together? I just say streetwear. Streetwear. Yeah, streetwear. Uh, for a person maybe who wants maybe to get such an outfit, uh, the one that you've got, like on a budget, could, uh, how much does it range from what amount to what amount? Roughly, just roughly. I'll say depending on the quality that you want, uh -huh. it would start from for a full outfit. Yeah, yeah, the one you got. I'll yeah. say 5,000. That's 000. for example from the jacket. The jacket alone is just 5,000. Five thousand. Yeah. That's a lot of money yeah, for, yeah. For, for a person who you doesn't need, have you need money. To invest. You need to invest in your fashion. You need to invest. Yeah. Need to invest. I, I love the way you're saying yeah. you need to invest in your fashion. Cool. Uh -huh. Jacket is five thousand. Uh -huh. Let's go. The Tell jacket me. won't just like be thrown away. Okay. This can it can be something you even pass down to someone. Right. You know, because of the quality of the fabric. And it's not, it's, it's not just it's for the, the jeans only. You can also pair it with a khaki. Can, can, can at some point do uh, j this jacket with the khaki pants? Exactly. Khaki pants, cord dry uh -huh. pants. Even uh -huh. black pants, right. yeah, black pants, a white t-shirt, uh -huh. uh, cord dry pants with maybe a red t-shirt. Okay. You know, there are so many possibilities. All right. Yeah. So even with this alone can mm -hmm. give you like three extra outfits. Three extra outfits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just on top of that. Yeah, just on top. Yeah. I understand we have the photos. Um, are they ready so that we can take a look? But there's one here at the background, but I can see there's uh, two gentlemen and, and two ladies. Yeah. In it, uh, so uh, well, this is, uh, I think it's also photography best. Oh, there you go. There you have it on your screen. So talk about it. Does it sell a story? Is there a story in, yeah. the, in this, in the, in this four gentlemen and ladies? Actually, this is our latest collection. It's called yeah. Welcome Home, Karibu Nyumbani. Uh, it represents Kenya and our heritage. Uh -huh. we, we chose to focus on pieces which are not too loud and which are not too also dull. Uh -huh. uh, this collection just touches on our home Kenya. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can see the background is playing. Is the okay? Uh, what about this one? This is still part of the collection. This whole collection, actually, uh, we focused on tailoring more. If uh -huh. you notice on the sleeves uh -huh. of the T-shirt, it doesn't uh -huh. have a hole. Okay. Yeah. So it like flows like a kimono. All right. So, so the way <laughs> I've heard the word kimono, yeah. but I've not gotten it exactly. A kimono it means, yeah. is a Japanese outfit, right. uh, but it usually doesn't have. An armhole. Um, See, like this armhole. Uh, yeah, so it's like it's, it's like almost flowing. close to a vest uh, or something. No, not really a vest. Uh -huh. It just flows. Oh, uh, wow. like so. Butter. There's a I big. It. It's Get a it. different shape. It gives uh -huh. you a different shape. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. What about this one? It's still part of the whole collection. Uh -huh. Like you see, even on the print, we uh -huh. we we took a Kenya Airways. Uh, uh -huh. Plane and, and we and we made like it a our plane own. taking off or landing yeah. or something. Exactly. It's like taking off. Uh -huh. So we're taking off. All right. Yeah. And the next one, still part of the collection. Uh, what is the name of this? <laughs> can you can a person dress like this to the office? Uh, not, not really. Not, uh -huh. maybe, maybe you wear something, something underneath, yeah, like underneath. tights or yeah. something. Maybe to an event, yes, you can dress like this. To yeah. an event. Yeah. All right. You see, even the bag. Uh, that's not a normal bag. Called a clutch bag. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You see, this is a, now what I was telling you about. It's called Karibu Nyumbani. Okay. It's our latest collection. 
-hmm. You see, do you notice on the armhole? There's no, right. uh, there's no armhole. Okay, uh -huh. I can see it. Yeah, you see. see it. Uh -huh. And then the print even, it glows in the dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so, this, it's in Nairobi, Kenya, 2023. Yeah, okay. so that's when we're launching the collection, actually. In, right. We're launching in July 1st. Uh -huh. yeah. Almost close to the Yeezy yeah. by Kanye. Almost, but not really from there. Yeah. Not but inspiration almost. from yeah. there. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so who is this? Uh, this is a hoodie and, 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 and the rest. Yeah, this is a hoodie, this is a model. Mm -hmm. My model, his name is Jeff. Okay. Yeah, so this is the hoodie I was telling you about. It's just the silhouette alone, the shape of it alone. Yeah. Just takes it to a different level. It's not something normal. So that's right. why I was trying to elevate streetwear now to something you can wear even to somewhere presentable. It's not just to the gym or somewhere uh -huh. normal. Like okay. this you can wear for an outfit, like mm -hmm. a dinner outfit. Yeah. You get. Yeah. Uh, for person who is color sensitive, <laughs> like they don't want to mix pink with the red, purple, yellow. You know, uh, uh, how do you how, how do you how, how do you design now outfits that maybe tap to people who are extremely color sensitive and those that maybe are not like they can put on anything. You know, there's, there's, there's a friend who is saying like fashion ensure that you just pick things that match and then you get out there. If they match, then it's okay. I don't know or your your philosophy on that. As part of the collection, uh -huh. I would say we are giving you what you should buy. We're, okay. we're like kind of dict dictating the market. You know, everyone has their own staples of what they like. Okay. But I would say we also expand your, your vision. Yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes people have never really tried something bright. Yeah. yeah. Maybe are there like a, a places you, you, you drew inspiration, especially when it comes to designing this? Because uh, the other one you said has a Kenya Airways uh, plane taking off. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand this shirt. Uh, is it like African print or something or just khaki? On, is it khaki? It's a, khaki it's a camouflage. It's a camouflage. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a camouflage print. I didn't want to design something like Ankara. You know, Ankara is everywhere now. So I wanted to design something, yeah. something similar, yeah. you know, but to a wider market, to even yeah. maybe a global market. Right. Yeah. I didn't know there's a camouflage shirt. It's a camouflage <laughs> Meaning shirt. a chameleon can land on you and <laughs> it, it just camouflages to your skin type. Yeah. All right. Uh, but, uh, did you maybe have like uh, family support that helped you come up with this uh, f uh, this launch out, or it was just me finances, me printing, me putting together, even paying the models? Some of the models are also volunteering to work no, with you. No, no, everything is paid. Actually. Everything is paid. Yeah. So I would say I, I have a lot of mentors. Uh -huh. uh, I wouldn't say I was helped everywhere, but yeah, I was helped sometimes in even direction of how I should launch it, marketing strategies. You yeah. know, from family members, from right. friends, from people who are already in the industry. Right. Yeah, yeah. So but any anyone in the industry that you can mention and give credit to that uh, will support you? Do you know Sally Carago? Mm, sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. She was mm -hmm. she was actually from our school. Okay. Yeah, she's the owner of the school where I, where I went to. Right. Yeah, so she gave me a lot of inspiration, yeah. Right. Yeah. And now here you are. Here I am now. All right, uh, as, as we sum up on that uh, fashion initiative, because we, we get to your artist part and, mm -hmm. and painting, maybe are there like fashion mistakes you think uh, a lot of, maybe, maybe I'd like you to say uh, the craziest fashion mistakes that men make and fashion mistakes women make. The ones you see are like, nope, no apple upon. Like generally on a day-to-day -day walk, walking through the streets and you meet a person, you're like, ah, 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 ah. red flag, red flag. Mm. I would say it's just a fit. Like yeah. I've seen a lot of oversized suits. Mm. It doesn't fit right. Yeah. The the pockets are lean almost to your knees. It doesn't right. really look good for men. Mm -hmm. For women, I would say the colors they overcolor, like they overdress. Yeah. So there's overdressing. There's over coloring. Over coloring. Uh -huh. It's like like 10 colors, like I've seen the bag is this different color, the heels are different color, the mm -hmm. makeup is different, the shirt, yeah. you get. Like, we should have like some, like a color palette for each outfit. Right. Yeah. Like if you want four colors, try to make everything something like cohesive. Uh -huh. yeah. You've explained about coloring and you've mentioned like different colors, shoes, yeah, together. So uh, for example, for a person who's going to, there's, there's this event in it to a color fest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if, 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 if it's not the event for people who have so many colors. That's the right event. <laughs> Literally. 
that's the best event for them. <laughs> well, people have so many cameras. Yeah. Uh, for a man, uh, would you advise them? You know, uh, your part of your background is pink. Uh, your backdrop, right? There is pink. Uh, I've heard, I've heard a lot of ladies say, I, I, I don't want my man to be in pink. You know, he shouldn't be in pink. But for me, I think a color is just a color. But then there's somebody who mentioned that pink. Uh, when a man puts on pink, it means he's overly confident. I don't know what's your ideology on that. Can men put on pink and be fashionable and be okay? Of course. And still be confident and not people look, give them a side eye and be like, ah, are you part of the rainbow or something? You know, because it's associated with that. True, well. true. Yeah, pink is just a color like any other color. I feel like pink can be for men, for women. There's no really gender when it comes to color. Yeah. I have seen even women wearing black. I've seen women wearing blue. Right. So I would say pink is also okay for women, for men. I would wear uh, pink. Myself. You wear pink yeah, yourself. I would wear pink, yeah. Maybe right. like a pink hoodie. Right. Yeah. What a pink, like pink hoodie, pink uh, snapback or cap, and then, then trouser. Yeah, not, not everything pink. I was just going to come overdue. I have overcolor. Put your attention. Yeah. Sana, yeah. But why, why are people, why do people have this facades in their mindsets? Like once you see somebody in a certain outfit, you're like, ah. And why not just be happy? You don't know where this person is coming from. Maybe they're even expressing themselves through colors, because colors are really expressive. Actually, I feel like fashion is a language, like one of our biggest languages, actually. Mm -hmm. So great, great. Mm -hmm. if, if my language doesn't, I, if I can't understand your language, of course I'll criticize it. Right. So, yeah, so if I see your language is just walking and it's everywhere, and yeah. I, that may not be what I like, of course, it's, criticism, criticism is open. It's like it's, it's normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not everyone will like your outfit. Right. Yeah. I think that pink part, that pink color thing, uh, received a lot of reception from Jay Z when he dressed up in mauve. He's, he said his is mauve, not pink. I've even <laughs> seen him in a whole suit, a whole yeah. pink suit. Pink head yeah, to toe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And he calls it mauve, mauve. not pink. Uh, <laughs> I think that's when it, it uh, became trendy. Yeah. And a lot of men received uh, a lot of reception with the pink suits. Anyways, uh, last to switch gear. Now let's switch back to your. Uh, painting part. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you integrate now fashion and painting all together and also strike that balance? Here you are, you have to deliver outfits, plan outfits, structure them, and then also become a painter, come up with uh, artwork and whatnot. How do you uh, harness that together? I don't really do it strategically. It just happens organically. Okay. When I started uh, going back to painting in 2020, uh -huh. when during covid so yeah, i had to like look then. back mm -hmm. and actually you know see where i want to which art which art uh, which art form i want to explore so i went back to painting i knew i had talent in painting and over time it has also helped in my graphics for the for like the camouflage that you've seen i created that i didn't buy that fabric i just printed on it uh, on the plane like i make graphics from the art direction yeah so i wouldn't say i really plan for it it just happens organically, actually. Okay. And in the future, I want to have exhibitions for my artwork. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, uh, you know, keep growing. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. And w when do you usually do your artwork? Uh, most of the time, like what parts of the week? Are you like really, because I understand that's a lot of creativity. You have to be fashion creative and then art creative in terms of now painting. And there's times, you know, they say as creatives, you experience a creative's block. There are days you feel like you've run out of ideas. You just don't want to do anything. True. You're, in fact, you're sitting down trying to combine ideas in your head, coming up with a masterpiece or something. So which one are your most productive days, especially field days for your painting? When it comes to painting, I work a lot at night. Like, I don't know, inspiration just comes at night. It's hard for me to sleep when I've not done it. Like sometimes inspiration comes, I just wake up and I start painting. Or I get an idea, I start sketching out. You get? Like during the day, I'm busy on fashion, yes, but I may go home and just something hits. Or I see something during my day and I say, okay, I'm going to work on it in the night. Yeah, yeah so creative blocks happen, yes. And when they happen, I just go for a walk. Like, and you know, you the world. You something and do nah, <laughs> yeah. a little minor nasama, burn something. Do you, <laughs> like yeah. you want to get in your creative zone. Yeah. Actually, most creatives drink something. There's those who say, ah, me, I just go to a corner and pray. But for you, you're like, I go take a walk. <laughs> Come back, I feel awakened or something. Nature uh, is enough. And nature yeah, is enough. Nature is you. enough. You just see, yeah. there's so much in the world. Like you can just get inspiration from anything. Yeah. Even a conversation, like this conversation we're having, yeah. like on the red belt, like that has already striked something in All me. Right. Right. So I wouldn't say I take anything. 
Yeah. So we just I take so inspiration about, from the so world. All the way, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting, you know, how you you manage to like tap into both faces True. and still be okay. Because mm -hmm. you know, for I, I I can only imagine the time you now be extremely commercial. You're busy. There's so many orders. There's so many printouts, and you have to actually deliver all of them. At least you'll need maybe a little bit of management or something, True. or maybe like a number of uh, support group that will help you to execute some of these tasks. Yeah. Now, when it comes to drawing, I'm, I'm, also, I'm also interested to know, do you draw people? Do you draw nature? Uh, do you just draw anything that comes to your mind? Like, uh, how, how does that process happen for you? Mostly, I do a series. Like, I can pick a storyline mm -hmm. of one character and different experiences the character may be going through that relate to my life right now. Right. Sometimes I get commissions and I'm told to draw a, a certain portrait when someone is there. And yeah, so it all depends. But most times it comes from a series, a narrative. Yeah. I think of, I'm inspired by, let's say, a topic. Let's say it's war. And yeah. I create a character. And I can mm -hmm. make 10 different, out, ten different uh, paintings that represent war in that character. It right. may be a storyline taking you down, why he ended up in war, right. you know, something like that. All on one portrait. Not, not in one. Mm -hmm. It may be that that's, that may be the beginning okay. of a whole series. Okay. Yeah. So mostly I just design in series. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So in short, it's imaginative creativity. Exactly. All right. Um, if you are to imagine, since you are a creative, yeah, <laughs> and you can imagine things and bring them to reality. Mm -hmm. um, if you are to iman imagine the economy right now and put it into um, a canvas or into a portrait, uh, what would the image look like? I'd say someone fishing. Someone fishing. Yeah, you know, like the hook has been dropped. The hook the in the hook, ocean. The, the yeah, lake. the hook has been dropped in the ocean. Uh -huh. Now ask who are the fish now. Uh -huh. And this uh, person is in a boat? Yeah, yeah I would say, ship. yeah, he's in, maybe even on the shore. On like, the shore. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. just thrown okay. a hook. Now that's like the government, like economy now. It's, uh -huh. it's taking us. Uh, so yeah. the one inch here, the water. Yeah, they're in the water, like the, the fish now. The fish in the water. Yeah, now the hook is mm -hmm. the economy. The, economy. Pass, the person fishing the government. Dripping yeah. them Taking hard. us, eh? No, yeah. no, no remorse. Uh -huh. yeah. No retreat. <laughs> squeeze on squeeze. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's creative. Uh, I think I've seen that picture because I'm also imaginative yeah. as well. Thank you. Um, which, creative, which, creative, which creative crazy can I think of right now? Uh, there's, there's this incidence of, uh, now uh, it, it has come, the opposition leader <laughs> and uh, the government, if you were to create or paint a picture on a portrait of how that maybe could look on a splash of a newspaper, uh, wh wh what could be the imagination on that portrait? Two bulls. Two bulls? Fighting, uh, yeah. Two bulls. You know, as you're seeing them, I'm imagining them on the newspaper. Uh -huh. like two bulls. Maybe Continue. Like different colors of bulls. Like different colors one color bulls. is this, uh -huh. one color is the opposition. Okay. And then maybe the grass is us now. Uh -huh. uh, the I people. Mentioned. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what are these two bulls doing? Are they just they're fighting each other? Yeah. Or they're, they're fighting. fighting. Yeah. So it's collision. Yeah. yeah. But you can see even the grass is getting messed up. And scattered. Yeah. It's scattered. It's yeah. Surreal. So yeah, when two bulls fight, the grass. Mm. Yeah. Mm, nice, interesting, yeah. interesting, interesting. Got it. <laughs> As you move away from that, now uh, are you able to draw like people? For example, uh, uh, somebody lands on some of your lands on some of your portraits online. I don't know if you're online on digital as well, because yeah. you know it's it's a digital space. Yeah, we are. Uh, if yeah. somebody lands on your pages online and they DM you and send you a text, they say, Do you also have you also ventured into uh, that kind of uh, drawing or painting? Yeah. I can do anything actually. Uh -huh. So it all depends on what you, the direction you want us to go. Okay. So most times I like to paint when you're actually there to get the emotions. Right. But also if you send me a picture, I can interpret it also. Right. Yeah, so I, I do anything. I'm open to anything when it comes to art right. and fashion. Right. I don't have any boundaries. Right. I try to push those boundaries. You try to push yeah. the envelope. To break the them all. Yeah. Those right. rules, I break them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, maybe are there also the ones you managed to sell out that you'd say, uh, if you see that one on the street, join the Are there ones that are that the ones that are already out there? They, they don't usually go to the street. Uh -huh. They go to like maybe like hotels All right. or, or maybe like uh, an even office. Even households. Uh, yeah, even households. Uh -huh. uh, most of my things which have gone to the household are flower paintings. 
Okay. Yeah, flower paintings, uh, things which just correspond with the home, okay. home decorations. Yeah. But why flower paintings though? Is it because a lot of people <laughs> like flowers? I would say inspiration, like I told you. I, uh -huh. I can go for a walk. Okay. I just see how this, this the colors on, on maybe that bush yeah. or you know that tree maybe glowing in a different way. Maybe there's a bird getting nectar from it, you get. Yeah. So I would say it just comes down to inspiration. And also if you want a commission, yes. Yeah, I also right. do commissioned pieces. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, there's, there's, a, there's a place in your description where you mentioned uh, your brand represents tranquility and happiness. Some of the adjectives you've given in there. Uh, does, it, does it mean something to you or even to the, to the client? Uh, mostly to me. Okay. When it comes to the client, you know, everyone has a different inspiration, a different uh, interpretation. Yeah, but to me, I try to design from a standpoint where everything is more like at peace, you know. I'm at peace when I'm designing. I'm, at, I'm happy when I'm designing. So yeah. that's, that's like tends to have, that tends, like my work tends to come out like that now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So personally it's from self-inspiration. Exactly. But then you, it's like you're giving all that energy. I'm to expressing the it now. The yeah. I'm expressing it on the, on the actual right. canvas. Which is really amazing. Thank you. Because you know, a lot of people out here need need good energy. True. <laughs> good energy. Because we live in a world where people are so stressed, and uh, people hold on hold on to different things in life. You know, depending on the experiences you've gone through in life. True. Now, st still on that drawing part, are there maybe like a time uh, you've won an award, or you've been awarded, or somebody has recognized your art and they gave you credit? If yes, please talk about it as well. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Mostly I've just been doing commissions, but now I want to do ex ex exhibitions of the, now the series I was telling you about. Right. Like a whole, like 15, 15 paintings, just to sh show you the narrative of that storyline, right. you know. So I, I hope from that, after, the, after doing the exhibitions and the tours, right. I'll get that award. Right, amen yeah. from amen. your mouth straight to, <laughs> to the heavens. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, but, but there's a place where you participated in a competition. Maybe you can briefly talk about it and how it went down. Did it favor you <laughs> or not? You know, what happened yeah. shortly? It was a fashion competition uh -huh. so in 2021. Okay. Yeah, so there were about 100 participants. Uh -huh. I made it to top 10 and I was chosen and we designed outfits. The whole thing was about Africa. We okay. were given uh, fabrics. They were all Ankara fabrics. Right. Yeah, Ankara. So, yeah, so that's already like they've given you already like it's like they've a limitation. Yeah, scripts. that's already yeah. a limitation. So you can't go beyond your creativity. Yeah. But I still did my thing. Uh -huh. I tried my best. Uh, unfortunately I didn't win. Right. Yeah, but at least I was top ten. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and and that also like affirmed what you do. Exactly. What you do. Yeah. Like, at least someone has seen right. this guy. There's something about him, yeah. There's something right. about his work. The person who possibly won that, what, what do you think made them become, become the, 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 the winner? I would say when it comes to like judges, uh -huh. it's your personal connection with them, with the work. Okay. As in maybe they connected more, the work connected more with the judges, uh -huh. with the people, with the crowd, you know. So yeah, I think that, that really favored them, the connection. And sometimes you can't know what will connect and what will not connect. Right. Yeah. So you just have to design from a truthful and honest. Right. Yeah. All right. And this year we talk about money a lot. <laughs> Is uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. And I'm, I'm interested to know if, have you made money? Are you making money? <laughs> or are you still in your baby making business? Baby making, not literally, but business baby making. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, have you made some little cash yet? Are you making it? Uh, are you going to make it? Or it's, it's in store loading? <laughs> We've made a little bit, yes, from the paintings, from the fashion, from the previous collections. But what we're doing right now is going to take it to a whole nother level. Right. This new collection that I'm telling you about, it's called Welcome Home. It's going right. to be a huge, a huge deal. I hope it will change history, like for yeah. fashion, yeah. Right. Uh, are there people that you've networked with uh, in, the, in, in that space as well, painting slash fashion? Yeah, uh, I've met a lot of in incredible artists also, uh -huh. like many who are also imagine and we know we help each other out with ideas sometimes, sometimes like techniques. Uh -huh. If you don't know how to paint like this, I can help you with this side. Right. Yeah. So everyone is, I feel like the more we help each other, the more we grow. Right. Yeah. 
the importance of unity because a lot of people would prefer I better go solo so that I don't mix up with anybody who, who doesn't rhyme with my brand, True. <laughs> especially when they're already famous and they have the numbers. And, and speaking of numbers, yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you massively present uh, on digital platforms? Because, you know, we live in a digital space. If you want to receive a lot of uh, uh, feedback, you must be making use of the digital platforms. Personally, are you on some of them? Yes, I'm on all, actually all of them. Uh -huh. My art, my fashion, everything is online. We also have a website for the fashion. Ah, and you can mention the website? Okay, the website is called intriguestore.com. Ah. The fashion Instagram is called i.intrigue. Yeah. Yeah, my personal is called Badmon Let's. All right. Yeah. All right, not interesting. <laughs> but you'll give it your number just in case somebody wants yeah, to contact yeah. you. Yeah, my as number as is 0758-44-3466. All right, yeah. as we sum it up, maybe, uh, looking forward in future maybe what should we expect from Letion's brand and perhaps if there are any fashion collabs that you'd like to do as well as in the painting aspect as well maybe are there things we should look forward to especially for the people that are solely dependent on what you do yeah i would say look for new new designs in the market look for new trends set by us not right. just referencing people Right. Look for collabs. We, we want to expand into collabs. After this collection, we'll for sure do more collabs. Uh -huh. Yeah, I even want to do like shows in Paris. You know, uh, fashion shows in Paris. The, the likes of the New York exactly fashion week New York Fashion rest. Week. Uh -huh. uh, maybe even next year we might be in Tokyo. You never know. You never know. So the the, the possibilities are <laughs> limitless. Yeah. <laughs> because, yes. Yeah. Big maybe, goals. Are, are there like also uh, fashion icons that you look up to? I know Gianni Versace is really common uh, because of the brand Versace and the sister as well. Uh, are there like maybe the ones internationally that you look up to, or also Africans as well? Because in Kenya, you have I don't know if you heard of Brian Babu. Yeah, yeah, he's Brian a stylist. Babu is really yeah. common in the celebrity space. Yeah, I've seen his work. On mm. mostly Saudi soul, yeah, I like what Oh, he's he dressed a lot of Saudi soul. Yeah, I've seen that, I've seen that. Yeah. And then I've also seen, you know, Virgil Abloh? Yes, I've, yeah. I've, I've had yeah. And that. then also the founder of Vivo, you know, Vivo, yeah. the Kenyan mm -hmm. brand. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I like what she's doing. As in, the, there's so many incredible icons who are coming up, especially in Kenya. Right. But mostly, like, for my peers, I like what my peers are doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, do you think Kenyans are fashionable? <laughs> uh, do you think Kenyans, we are fashionable <laughs> and, and marketable? <laughs> In terms of fashion, if, if we were to send a Kenyan on New York Fashion Week, would you pinpoint and say, ah, maybe we'd like, I would vet Vivo or vet Brian Babu and put them on that space? I don't know if you agree. Are we fashionable or not? Or we are walking through that path well, still? Yeah, exactly. We're walking through that path. Because if you look 10 years ago, uh -huh. the industry was barely even there. But if you look right now, there are so many more people who have come up in the fashion industry. Right. So I would say we're working there, and maybe in the next five years, this will be something big in the industry. Like Kenya will be a big part of right. fashion. In but Africa. for now, you, 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 feel, you, you feel like the industry is still young, pretty much young. Not really young, uh -huh. but it's not yet reached Mature. its peak. It's not yet reached the peak. Okay. Yeah, it's still, it's, it's still growing, yeah, it's still right. growing, yeah. Who are some of the most fashionable personalities in Kenya? Um, I'd like you to point out maybe in politics as we exit, in politics, who's more fashionable in the political space, um, in the entertainment space, uh, on TV maybe, who is the perhaps most fashionable TV couples that you've heard of, could have been even read about, uh, in sports, also in Kenya, and maybe outside, who is also most fashionable? And then, um, on, uh, wait, did I say church? Do we have a fashion? Yes, I think we have one lady who, who's our preacher. She's exquisitely fashionable. So I, I'd like you to maybe say, uh, you can start off with the one you remember. Who, is, who do you think is the most fashionable in politics in Kenya? Putting me on the spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, most of them wear suits. Uh -huh. So. I don't really have an opinion on that. I feel like yeah. Jalas is fashionable. Have you, seen, have, have you seen his outfits lately? Yeah, I've seen the shirts. Fashionable. The, the, mostly the shirts, yeah. The president on the weekend, was it on the weekend or the week the before suit, this? Yeah. If you saw that outfit, oh my goodness, and the watch, like, I, I like that in some. I saw he had one, like, a uh, short sleeved yes. coat. Yeah, that was, that was. My very, grandma would call uh, it Kaunda suit. <laughs> <laughs> With a t-shirt, actually. So yes. He changed the, the formal. Exactly. The formal Just aspect. All yeah. black. Exactly. Very fashionable. I would say that, that's, a, that's a step, yeah. Uh, in TV, who do you think is the most fashionable? The ones you've landed across? I've seen the, the host of the trend. That is Amina. Yeah, Andy. yeah, I've seen her. 
her style is dressed like good. Grand Babu. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So see, so uh, yeah, she has a love fashion. Yeah, she, she's Mel, nice Mel personality fashionable in TV in Kenya. Mm. Our male couple. Not male couple. Hey, where? <laughs> where? Where? Hey. Maybe a couple that's fashionable oh. on TV. In Rush? Kenya. And Lulu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see them actually matching. Yeah, yeah. yeah I usually Quite see them matching. As well. yeah. In sports, as we sum up, uh, in sports, any sporty, um, athletic person that you know is fashionable. Maybe you help me there. Neymar. Ne Neymar. Neymar is fashionable. Ronaldo oh, is Oh, I bet you're saying in Kenya. Oh, in Kenya. Oh. In Kenya. Um, do we have Kipchoge? Is Kipchoge fashionable? Yeah, actually, I've seen his work with Nike. Right. Yeah, yeah, I've seen his work with Nike. And right, yeah. impressive, yeah. impressive. Kipchoge, impressive. Yeah. impressive. Impressive. Any religious person in the religious sector? <laughs> I think Reverend Lucy Natasha is extremely fashionable. Like she, she doesn't look like a pastor. You, you definitely think she's a model or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's really interesting, like you said, like we are not yet there, but at least we have people. We have a direction, yeah. Yes, yeah. We are yet there. Now, uh, again, as we exit, give out a number if a person wants to consult you, uh, not even consult as well, to buy your outfits, get to book, book you for gigs, uh, how can they plug in and get you? Our website is intriguestore.com. My number is 0758-44-3466. My Instagram is i.intrigue. Uh, my email is letionketienya at gmail.com. So there's so many ways you can reach me. All right. Yeah. Thank you. We have been speaking to uh, Letion. Yeah. Ke Ke Ketienya. Ketienya. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you, know, you know, you can be sued for mispronouncing <laughs> people's names. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing your art and everything that you do. Thank you for having me. Pretty much wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. And at this point, that's when we call it a day. Thank you so much for keeping us company from the beginning till right now. Hashtag is why in the morning at Brian Sack 101, Y254 channel, everyone on social media, underscore on the ground, verified with a blue check mark. I'm Brian Sakwa. And we see you next time right here on Why in the Morning.